venire a dirmi quello che devo fare e non fare in questo palazzo. Cerco solo di rendere tutto pulito. Tira. Stupendo quello che trovi. Vuoi diventare la preferita di Baron? Oh no, no. Quello lo lascio. Solo perché tu stanotte sei stata con lo Baron, non credere di potergli dare tante arie! He must have been delayed. No. He's forgotten. I don't see why we should wait any longer. And Allegra? He'll stay the night, I suppose. I don't like to leave her, Mary. It's not suitable. She was here before. She should be with her mother. We should never have persuaded him to take an interest in her. Oh, it's too late for hindsight. Oh, stop playing with that thing. La Carlotta, la Rizzatto, la Giulietta. Poi tutte sparite. Tua eccellenza, torna da me. Scusi, signor Shelley. Tu non durerai una settimana. Non hai stomaco, tu. Cosa? Non tanto quanto quel papagallo. E non venire a dirmi che non ho stomaco. These are women. Are they a permanent feature? I believe so. How does he endure it? Dark, decaying rooms. When he's not coming, Mr. Hoffner would have found him by now. Going back to the inn. Oh, do wait. Surely it can be settled in the morning. He's asleep, then. Oh, of course. I'm sure we can persuade him. Persuade Byron? Is it really so important to you? Mary, she's like one of our own. You always yes, said so. she's not, is she? She's not mine. My daughter's buried out there on the Lido. Perhaps if you've been a little more concerned for her... Oh, Mary! I'm sorry. I keep saying these stupid things. It wasn't your fault. You've been hunted by calamity. Oh, my dear, dearest girl. No! Only weak, passionate natures give way to grief. Besides, you have Will Mas. Yes. I can have another child. Yes. I can't see me stop shaking. Don't be too long, Bessie. La signora parte, you go. Call me a gondola, please. Si, si, si. Poppe! Poppe! Shall we have another race?
was it today? Oh, and I wrote it down too. I never look at a memo without seeing that I've remembered to forget. Brandy Fletcher. She's grown, hasn't she? Come here, princess. Your hair's darker. Oh, she'll be a damn deceitful, delightful woman yet. That's all for me. Ha ha ha, you see? I wonder why her hands are always so cold. We're leaving for Rome tomorrow. Oh, so soon? I must take Mary away. But before we go, I want to ask you about... Yes, yes, take her to bed. She's too much like a mother. Margarita, you've been squabbling again. I shall have to get rid of you. Devo liberami di te. No, Excellency. That Fletcher. Always he make trouble. He and Luigi. Don't believe her, my lord. She's a terrible liar. Wouldn't know the truth if it came up and addressed her. She's a cow. Yes, your cow, Excellency. <laughs> and take off that ridiculous hat. Fit to breed gladiators. I like that sort of animal. Well, I have to like something. Do you know, Shiloh, the women here kiss better than any other nation? It's attributed to the worship of images and their consequent early habits of osculation. Don't drown it, man. Before we go south, I'd like to know what you intend for her. My little bastard, I'm thinking of placing her in a convent. A convent? Yes, let her become a nun. It's a character much wanted in our family. But you can't. You really cannot do that. You promised to keep her with you for at least eight years. My lord, Mary and I would take care of her. Let us have her and bring her up. On green tea and atheism. So, you're back. Come in, Hopner, come in. I've been searching the city. We would meet you at six, my lord. Where were you? Putting it about. I beg your pardon? Copulating, sir, with an oyster wench, an Adriatic nymph. And Fletcher, pour his majesty's consul a large brandy. My apologies, my dear friend. I really am sorry. Mr. and Mrs. Hotton have offered to keep Allegra on a more permanent basis. If you don't want her to be with us. We'd be happy to. Would you agree to that? Oh, very well. Provided her mother keeps a distance. I won't have Madame Claire in Venice. She's seen her now. That's my part of the bargain. Good God, man. How long do you think you can live this life of passion? Life of passion? My dear Hopner, there's no such thing, any more than a continuous earthquake or an eternal fever. Besides, who'd ever shave themselves in such a state? No, I'm simply leading a quiet, debauched life. I've never made any pretensions to regularity of conduct. What I get by my brains, I spend all my bollocks. You'll kill yourself. <laughs> you will. <laughs> no constitution can support these excesses. No, I shan't be posthumous yet. Mind you, I've thought about it. On my more lemoncholy days, Many a time, I'd have blown my brains out if it wouldn't have given my mother-in-law such enormous pleasure. And even then, if I could have been certain to haunt her... Can't you be sensible for a moment? All, all this! You're brutalising yourself. You don't enjoy it. I do, you know. No, really. yourself. Now, Shiloh, I won't be cornered. You've been whispering together, you two, and now you're about to read me a lecture full of cant and sentiment. But how can you associate with these people? They're simply not worthy of you. At least they're honest. They accept me as I am. Now, don't be cross with me, Shiloh. I admit the validity of everything you say. There's no help for it. My demon, my black, laughing devils drive me to things I never intended. Do you really think I approve all this? Then give it up. Come to Rome with us. Better still, my lord. Go back now, to... Now, please, it. don't speak of England, that kingdom of Kant. I had a house and lands and wife and child. And a name there once. My lord, will you listen to reason? If it can do no harm. All that's forgotten. <laughs> Nero. Giulio Gabulus. Henry VIII. The devil. I was compared to them all. Insulted in the streets and hissed as I went to the house. Lady Jersey was the only person in the fashionable world who didn't look on me as a monster. When I left the country, they came to the quayside. 
disguised as their own servants. They stood there, whispering, pointing out my coach, my packing cases, my china, my boots, my cloven foot! And you think that's forgotten? E tu allora che non gli sei nemmeno fedele a Lord Byron? Troppo! Destroy yourself, squandering your talent is not good enough. No, 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 no. You acknowledge everything. You lull us with the frankness of your confessions, your remorse, and still you do nothing. It really is too ridiculous. I may be wicked, Shiloh. I am not ridiculous. This cynicism, this worldliness, it's unworthy of you. Free yourself, my lord. Liberalize your sentiments. You should be kind to women. Honor them, their generosity and understanding. Oh, you venerate the species. But your women have no organs. They have souls. Questionable. Oh, what do you mean? I mean it's questionable whether women do have souls. I can't make up my mind. Better dead than wed, I believe. I never said that. Oh! I said honourable men have no need of laws. Love's a hostile transaction. No. When you agree your lovers, when it's over, anything but friends. Love, Byron, not lust. What you call love is the cold-blooded and malignant selfishness of sensuality. Love is the sole principle that should govern the world. Oh, reform the world if you must. Why don't you understand? The only real crime is willfully injuring a fellow being. Now, Shiloh, please. Love, Byron. You love, love, love the love. animals! Thirty-six, my lord. What? Thirty-six. Oh, I'm getting puffy, Fletcher. Well then, I must diet again. We'll start today. Uh, may I respectfully remind your lordship that he's invited the Italian nobility to luncheon? Is that? Yes, my lord. One o'clock. God, that's a grey hair. Well, you have to see the stairs are clean before these people come. At least La Fornarina sort of it. There weren't droppings everywhere. Well, that's all right. Perhaps we should reinstate her. No, my lord. If you don't mind. <laughs> she kept you in your place, didn't she? She was a little weary. So, we'll have to get rid of this flap. A few rounds with Gentleman Jackson would have done it. Of course, you know what she'd say. Augusta would say, You've been no, my lad. Very, very no. And now you'll have to pay up. <laughs> Gus. She knew all my weaknesses. But she had love enough to bear with them. The same lone thoughts and wanderings. Tomorrow, then, it's back to magnesium and soda water, and we'll go no more a rowing. By the light of the moon. Oh, this is excellent. Really excellent. Si, si. Prepiani has caught you to perfection. But surely my expression is more unhappy. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm the guardian. Yeah, my lord. <laughs> The eyes, the mouth are so right. Gondolieri, live port in beer. Kindly stop gaping and take yourselves off. English.
conditioned out women like dry butterflies. Oh. No, seriously, I might be some strange beast in a really show. They even bribe my servants to let them into the house, into my bedroom. But of course, they are interested, Caro. All your countrymen who come to my salon at once ask for the famous Lord Byron. And what do you tell them, Marina? <laughs> that you are great. Great not only in your head, but in your heart. <laughs> Marina. Oh, si. But why do you like to be sad? Nobody elects to be sad, Contessa. It's an affliction. And uh, what do you take for it, my lord? Ah, his lordship and I ride out most days in the Lido. Best thing in the world for the Constitution. But I have the perfect cure for your lemon folly. <laughs> uh, say something, John. Not at all. What do you prescribe? That you should visit us in Ravenna. I wish you would, my lord. Our little town is provincial, of course, but charming. And you could ride in the pine forest. And we even have a ghost for you. Oh. Ghost count? Yes, a real one. The wild huntsman. Each night he gallops through the woods with his hounds. They say he pursues the lady who was too proud to love him. <laughs> <laughs> My wife is a romantic. Today Romagna is haunted by more um, tangible apparitions. But you are still under papal rule, Count. Oh, ostensibly. Ah, don't talk to me about this terrible Austrians, Madonna. They are destroying Venezia as they destroy Milano. Papa. They take the best seat at the Phoenician and they don't even remove their hats. Such arrogance. And such extortion, oh. Contessa. Uh, however, there is reason to hope. The little cards hidden within our young men's hats. <laughs> if you could only be sure of concerted action. Now, don't you get involved, my lord. You must want to see independence. Not at the expense of privilege. Ah, Mr. Hopner will not commit himself. But in politics, we are very passionate people. Let me tell you, Mr. Hopner, in my youth, I once danced around the Tree of Liberty in the San Marco with my breasts barred. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, Countess. Just to celebrate the French Revolution. <laughs> it nearly occasioned one here. Ah, but instead, they wrote a song for me. You must have heard it on the canals, no? La 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 Watch out for that monkey. Yes, I hope we shall meet again, my lord, before we leave Venezia. I share that. Tea top! Alessandro, while you have your siesta, I shall go out on the lagoon and practice my French with Mademoiselle Fanny. As you please, cara mia. Uh, you know, sir, I often wish we might have British protection at Ravenna in these changing times. It's hardly foreign office policy to interfere in your internal affairs, Count Greechley. No, that is not quite what I intended. <laughs> Alora, we shall see you both at my evening on Thursday. We shall be delighted. We are putting a little something in your boat, my dear. Belinda, darling, you think of everything, but you are going to make me put on weight, and what will Beffa say then? Why, <laughs> that you will be as adorable <laughs> as ever. Be a good boy mm, now. Of course. We are all proud of you, Tesoro. Mm. Mr. Hoffman? Countess Benzoni? Count Ragoni? My shawl, Beffa. Yes. My. <laughs> You'll let us know when you want to see Allegra. Shall we ride tomorrow? <laughs> That'll be splendid. At five. <laughs> be careful, won't you? Went very well, my lord. Yes, didn't it? Would your lordship object to my temporary absence this afternoon? Philandering again. Yes, my lord. <laughs> You're getting yourself into another scrape, Fletcher. And now, my lord, same scrape, Marietta. Oh, what a fool you are. She reeks of garlic. 
Most distasteful, my lord. But she says she'll kill herself if I leave her. She's costing me a fortune in laundry bills. But the linen's well done, sir. And you must admit, uh, she irons like an angel. All right. Go, go. Thank you, my lord. And tell Tita to have the gondola ready. Yes, my lord. You're a wicked man, Fletcher. Yes, my lord. Return it with an enclosure. We cannot always be meeting in gondolas. You do not understand. Oh, I do, I do, Contessa. All those dear little smiles and glances and blushes during luncheon. Do you think they passed unnoticed? My darling, what are you saying? To forget my honor? No, it is impossible. We can never run away. Never, never. Only the English do such things, and they do it in Scotland. Here it is an outrage against society, against the family, against the teachings of the Holy Church, against God. Also, it is unnecessary. I have spoken to Alessandro. You uh, can't be serious. But yes. Every real wife has her amico, and he has agreed. Follow you about the salons with your... Tippets and fans and things like, like Beppe and the Benzoni. But do you not see? We are then formally recognized. It is the one way we can be together. Me? Cavalier Cerventi? Why must you be so proud? A few small attentions, that is all. You know how to double a show. I imagine so. <laughs> what a singular little creature you are. No, darling. Like this. Ah. Naturally, you must pay the greatest respect to Alessandro. Naturally. And you may call on us as often as you please, but I may not visit you. And of course, our love must be platonical. From my observation, it seldom is. But yes! Like Petrarca and Laura. Petrarca was a whining old bore. What are you saying? He is our greatest national poet. Better than Dante. Far better. I hope this spiritual system won't last long. The other day we had an elephant go mad in Venice. He broke out of his house, killed the keeper, ate up a fruit shop and generally committed mayhem. He went mad for want of a she. But we are not animals. Why do you say such things? because I can't do this damn chore. It does not matter. Do you think I ever loved before? 
We marry for our parents, for the property. You are the first man I love. I'll do what I can. And you will come to Ravenna? <laughs> yes. There is to be a fair in June, <laughs> with a theater and parades on the corso. Also, acrobats. And, um, how do you say, uh... Uh, jugglers. Yes, and all kinds of dancing and music. I hate dancing. What? I hate it. But it is the most natural thing in the world. For me? How can I dance? You mean your food? Are you shy about it? Come. Show it to me. Teresa, as long as I live, I will not allow anyone to see this foot. But your body is beautiful. You are too sensitive. Uh, Teresa, please. But it is not noticed only when you try to hide it. I don't it. wish to discuss it. Ever. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to snarl. smell of bread and butter. Like a little girl. Contessa! My dear fellow, you must have taken leave of your senses. To elope with her in broad daylight and in the husband's coach. But we weren't doing anything of the sort. But you should have travelled by night in the public diligence. And disguised yourself as a Hungarian cavalry oh, officer. I tell you, she had to come to Venice to see the physician on her husband's advice. And she's living here now, in the house. Caro, caro, and until now you have behaved so well. I'd be very cautious, my lord, if I were you. Witchley is no fool and he has a reputation for jealousy. I happen to know he's responsible for at least two deaths in Romania and is a little suspected of having poisoned his first wife. Perhaps we are too many for you at this time. We could find lodgings elsewhere. No doubt you are right. It is the best way to prevent gossip. But this is hardly the place to shed a fever, my lord. I would gladly welcome you back to Ravenna. However, an obstacle has arisen in the shape of Teresa's father. I have said to him, My dear Gamba, if I am not allowed... But he is adamant. He begs you not to return there and to say nothing of this to his daughter. Naturally, I do not wish to antagonize him or to prejudice our own friendship, which I value above everything. But you really do not look well, my lord. Not well at all. Have you considered a more bracing air? She is very young, headstrong. Do not take her from me. 
You must be practical, my darling. I cannot. I will not go back with him. You do not know what he is like. His awful habits. Teresa, don't you understand how serious the consequences could be? How lasting? I do not care about the money. You'd care about other things. A society you could no longer enter. The little slights, the awkwardnesses. The whispers only half heard. No, I won't let you ruin your life. God knows I seem to have a genius for it. I won't have you compromised. You do not love me. You do not love me enough. If I didn't, my darling, I'd most certainly sacrifice you. Ten years ago, I'd have taken you away. I cannot marry you, and... And perhaps someday, somewhere, I might leave you. What would you do then? I am not afraid. But if I never saw you again, there would be no sun left in the sky. What can I say to you? It's not my destiny to preserve anyone's happiness. People like me, our imaginations are warmer than our hearts. I destroy you. As surely as I destroy everything else. So, I'm to be married, Gus. Aren't you going to congratulate me? It was your idea. Are you happy now, my dear sister? Are you happy, Gus, that I'm to be saved? Are you pleased for me? You mean to sleep in the same bed with me? I hate sleeping with a woman, but do as you please. One animal is as good as another, I suppose, provided she's young. That's no proof of attachment. a little suspected of having poisoned his first wife. His awful habits. Look at me. All you said. He has written to England for you about the consulate. Look at me. Yes, you are more interesting now. I told you I'd be jealous. He's killed two men in Romania. We put her in a convent at Ravenna. I would not become too involved in local politics, my lord, unless you wish to be exiled with the Gambas. And I will not give her a separation. It must come to that. You should have married me when I first proposed to you two years ago. It's too late now. I'm afraid it's your disposition to consider what you have as worthless and what you have lost as invaluable. Oh, don't be sentimental. If you didn't mind my words, we'd get on very well together.
Yes, Fletcher. It's dawn, my lord. Dawn? We're leaving for Pisa, sir. Edward John Trelawney, sir. He arrived yesterday and has been urging me to bring him over ever since. A very great privilege, my lord, to meet the author of Don Juan. And the Corsair. Welcome to Pisa, Mr. Trelawney. Perhaps you would care to join us for a dish of tea. By God, I would. May I inquire, sir, if the menagerie below belongs to you? Ah, but I had to leave a number behind in Ravenna. An old badger, a goat with a broken leg, and an Egyptian crane. Byron, do you ever wonder who all those animals were before they were changed into these shapes? <laughs> I do love you. Well, come, sit down, sit down. The Contessa and her brother are here. And the kettle's boiling. This ring? African, madam. Made of elephant's hair. You seem to have been all over the world. Here and there, madam. The Malays, China, the South Seas. And are you married, Signor Trelawney? I was, Countess, to an Arab girl whom I rescued in the desert. I was passing as a Mohammedan at the time, and we fell in love there and then. How romantic. Ah, but it was uh, not destined to endure. She, she died of an internal fever, and I cremated her body on the sands. Yes, I should like to be cremated. It has such pure finality. Percy. You shoot, of course. Possibly, my lord. They won't allow pistol shooting in the garden here. Most days we ride out to a farm. You could try your hand with us tomorrow. Be careful, Byron's a crack shot. Then I must do my best to match his lordship. Ain't he my corsair to the life? Shelley says he sleeps with it under his pillow. I do not know why. He frightens me. There is something strange in him. Oh, you're tilting at shadows, Karina. He's an adventurer, that's all. If we could uh, get him to wash his hands and not tell lies, we might make a gentleman of him. A day already. I shall see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, Pietro. I shall take it as a favour if you will ensure that your sister is always accompanied. We don't want to give the authorities here any pretext. Come. In case you weren't aware, beside the fruit barrow, Yes, I used to shoot at Manton's Gallery in London. Once boasted to him I was the best shot in town. No, my lord, he said, but your shooting today was respectable. <laughs> yeah! What the devil? Have you ever seen the like of that? Come on! Explain what you mean by your conduct. Inglesi. Via. Ignorante. Porco Dio. Sono pazzi. Arrestateli tutti. Sargente. Arrest us indeed. Pizza. Fermi tutti. Fermatevi tutti quanti. Face the police. Report this man. We shall, of course, make an official complaint. You can account for all your servants, my lord? Yes. You are quite certain of that? Yes. And the Count, Pietro Gamba? He rode back with me. You cannot possibly attach any blame to the Gambas. Well, I will do what I can. But I'm afraid the government will expect a detailed report. As you are no doubt aware, my lord, they have already a full dossier on the Gambas, who are in Tuscany only on temporary visas. The fact that they that they favor political novelties, their activities with the Carbonari at Ravenna, the financing of arms, the 
Contessa's separation from her husband. And then, my lord, you have such strange friends. An atheist among them. What the devil has that got to do with this business? It is, shall we say, not without significance, nor the secluded peaceful practice you enjoy together. Hmm. The history of Greece by Mitford. I have heard this is good. Sisters. Where was the bearded one, Tito Falcieri, when you were Inside the palazzo, he remained with me. And the coachman, Vincenzo Papi. Why are you so concerned with the whereabouts of my servants? Because the dragoon was struck down as he passed your gate. He was stabbed, my lord, with a pitchfork or some form of lance. He is not expected to leave through the night. There. Where's the cabin? Here. I've missed my vacation. I should have been a sailor. A man who don't smoke or swear, you'll have to plunge your arms in a bucket of tar, my lad. Don't be silly, Trell. And this isn't your little skiff. You won't be able to eat Plato at the tiller now. When I was a little boy in Wales, I made a small river boat. A foot long it was. The sail was a five-pound note and my passenger was a small tabby cat. <laughs> Can you turn your head on? Why is his lordship always at the table? He don't care a rush about it. But it is a release from his writing. You've made a great difference in him, you know. Ah, that's right. What's this island? Mm. Gorgona. But you best wait till Mr. Williams knows more about navigating before you try for Gorgona. No, it's no use. They'll do whatever they want. No, he's right, Mary. We must learn all the ropes. You will, by summer. And when his lordship's boat comes, We'll all live aboard and suffer a sea change. That's it! That's it! A sea change into something rich and strange. We'll call her the Ariel. Oh, you cannot. He'll be so offended. But Don Juan is the wrong sex, Countess. Look at her. Look at those lines. Yes, but isn't there a superstition against changing a name? She hasn't been christened yet. And Ariel was a boy. A spirit, Countess. Flying here and there over the islands. And you'll be flying here and there with all that sail on her. You'll need two tons of ballast to bring her down to her bearings. I must consult with Williams. Did I hear tea? Aye, then. Yeah. Who was the winner? I was lucky today. Yeah. Yes, of course. Byron, will you tell these idiots to redesign their sail? But why do you call yourself an atheist, sir? To express my abhorrence of superstition and injustice. And that's why people don't buy your poems. <laughs> my dear man, the delusions of Christianity are fatal to original thought. But that's not true. He's quizzing you. An atheist believes in nothing, in a vacuum. Why do you so hate God if you do not believe he exists? I believe in the laws of nature, Countess, not in miracles. But the law of nature is only a law. God made the law of nature and he can change it. Like some irresponsible despot. You love liberty. What right have you to deny liberty to God? I believe in miracles because I believe in God. And I could not believe in him unless I knew him to be omnipotent. Bravo! Well, they've called me atheist and manichaean. That shocks the public. They don't know what it means. The truth is, I deny nothing and doubt everything. I suppose I'm what you might call a, an anything aerial. <laughs> that sounds rather good, don't you think? Anything aerial. Oh, I'm no enemy to religion, my dear. Aren't I educating Allegra, a strict Catholic? Yes, they're questioning me at six, so why it should be necessary now the man's recovered. I'd like to go into Leghorn after see Captain Roberts. You might pick up what information you can there. His lordship means about Greece. Ah, you all talk and write of liberation. But you won't put on uniform and fight for it. Shrile. He's right. He's right, Shiloh. Words. Thousands of words. Why won't you understand? Man has no right to kill his brother. It's no excuse if he does it in uniform. It merely adds the infamy of servitude to the crime of murder. And how else do you think revolutions are made? I'll see you down. Not coming, huh? 
Percy? No, you go on. I must have it out with him. He demands too much of you. Riding, shooting, billiards, his weekly dinners. When we move to the coast, you'll be at peace. You'll be able to write again. Shall I? Without any assurance of sympathy for my work. I no longer have any confidence. Oh, and you... to write in solitude is unprofitable vanity. If only would be more human. Like Byron. Oh, stop it. Stop comparing yourself. When we move to Lerici, you'll find It's that... too late, Mary. The sun has extinguished the glowworm. I'm content if the sky is calm for the passing moment. Here! Show her the doctor's letter and let's hear no more about it. And forget the child, along with the badger and the goat with the broken leg. You called it a temporary expedient. Bring her to Pisa now, my lord. She's perfectly well where she is. Her mother doesn't think so. Allegra has had a light fever from which she has now recovered. Here. The doctor says she's out of danger. I don't think you care at all for the child. Nonsense. I provided for her in my will, haven't I? She'll receive a proper education and marry very well. Thank you. I'm talking about love, man. Oh, you hold her on your knee when she's about. But it's Ada you send presents to in England. Ada's portrait also on your desk. At least let her mother go to her. No. She needs reassurance. Which you have. You've never been near the place. It's not healthy there. Shiloh, I will not be browbeaten over this. It's a decent convent where some of the first families in Romagna board their children. You know what Madame Claire's about. I know she's out of her mind with worry. I know she's nearly frantic. Damn bitch. Can't live without making scenes. Oh, you! Why are you so concerned about Madame Claire? Anyone would think it was your child! Why have I been so blind towards you? Oh, now come, Shiloh! Don't say any more. Is Tita there? Downstairs, my lord. I have bad news for him. They informed me today he'll have to leave Tuscany because of the Dragoon. Sorry, my lord. Tita won't like that. It's only a beginning. They don't dare remove me yet. No, my lord. Fletcher? It's an old hag of a world. Sometimes I think those animals downstairs are the only constant creatures in it. Yes, my lord. Ah, Tita. Eccellenza, permesso. La Contessa è qui. E sola? Si, si, Eccellenza. Yeah. Dear, oh dear, who is it? The courier from Ravenna. I found him at our house. With father. Allegra. Two days ago, she had a convulsive attack. A little after ten at night. I see. No. Leave me. your disposition to consider what you have as worthless and what you have lost as invaluable. Not long, not short, my young lord, but far, far from here, 
close to water and in your 37th year. Think I am more passionate? Yes. Then why do you talk of going to Greece or to England? Just talk. Then why are you not more passionate? Perhaps I'm a little tired. Because you do not eat the right food. No, I'm getting old. I'll be 35 next year. Your move. That is not old. You do not eat properly. Teresina, you can't want me to grow fat. I think if there is thinness and no passion, then it is better fat. No. It is all right. Perhaps we can compromise. Oh, magnificent, isn't it? But where are we to go now? Uh, Genoa, I think. With my father and Pietro? Yes. Do not leave me, Byron. You will not leave me, will you? Why ever should I? I'll see they have permanent visas in Genoa, but they can't stay here without a renewal. Do you think if I went to Firenze and threw myself at the feet of the Grand Duchess... If you do anything of the sort, I shall never throw myself at your feet ever again. But perhaps... No, I... and half. Half, half. What is this half? You could have taken my piece and you didn't. I'm half of you. You are cheating again. You cannot beat me, so you invent this half. Peach and Nina, it's a rule of the game. Can I do it too? Certainly. Half, 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 half. <laughs> what are you doing now? Put them back. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Trelawney, my lord. Oh, why, well, best see what he wants. You mad, Romagnola. Fletcher? The lady? What do you say, half? Well, that's when you can take your opponent's draft and you file to, so then you. Oh, yes. Done. Thank you. Uh, Fletcher? The lady. We must make some changes in his lordship's diet. Less green tea and vegetables, more red meat and wine. Yes, my lady. Trelawney thinks Shiloh may be in trouble. Well, you know how he is, always looking for images in the sea and the sky, putting the helm up instead of down. What has happened? Well, sit down, Trell, sit down. Williams and he said they had to be back in Lerici by nightfall. I warned them the weather was breaking. They took no notice. When they left Leghorn, the sea was a sheet of lead. There was a scud of dirty clouds. I wanted to take your boat and go along, but I couldn't get port clearance. Well, I fell asleep in her cabin, and I was woken about uh, six by the storm. The breakers were driving in from seaward. Some boats had just run into harbor, and one of the captains said he'd seen the aerial, and they wouldn't take help. Uh, well, I expect they made Larici. I don't know. He said she was carrying full canvas and running into the dark. Have you heard anything of Shelley? What is it? I'm trying to... F You've seen Shelley? On Sunday, when he left for Leghorn. Oh, God. Oh, my God. The salts. It's after midnight. How did you come? the diligence, sir. Alone? J. Williams. The carriage outside. Well, we'll, we'll bring her in. No. Thank you. We thought they were waiting out the storm. This morning a letter came from Lee Hunt asking if they'd arrived safely. He spoke of them and already sailed. They, they may have been blown over to Corsica. Or be back in Livorno by now. We must go to work. Not, not till you've rested. Have you had anything to eat? I want nothing. My dear, you make them up a parcel. I'm sure they are safe, Mary. We asked on the way in Lerici. Well, if there had been an accident, it would have been known. 
Oh, forgive me for disturbing you like this. It's you I'm worried for you. You shouldn't be out of bed. But they, they could be in Corsica. Yes. Or Elba. I can't lose him. I've been so stupid these last few weeks. You were ill. Oh, stupidly jealous. Because he gave Jane Williams a guitar and wrote some verses to her. He loved everyone, Mary. Speak as though he's dead. Captain Roberts came over for the day. When Percy came in for luncheon, he'd been bathing. He was naked. I had to berate him and say, how dare you? And he looked so wonderful, with his hair full of seaweed, and his body wet, smelling of the sea. Oh. No! I must go. I must get let all over you on. You won't stay till after two. What can you do tonight? No. I know it really. But I cannot accept it. like me. Sometimes I feel there is something behind me. Waiting. Implacable. What is it? Nemesis. My familiar. Death. They must know where they buried him. I restore to nature the elements of which this man was composed, earth, air, and water.
Everything is changed. Nothing annihilated. He is now a portion of that which he worshipped. I know her kind, the woman of the world. She is bored with her husband, and now she wants not one lover, but two. My dear Lady Blessing. So she can return to London and boast of her intimacy with you. She wants you to fall in love with her. I'd sooner fall into the sea. Please, I have eyes in my head. When you are with her, you are always bowing and smiling. Yes, you are very happy. My dear Teresa, if you must know, I'm making a study of her. Donnie Johnny is going to meet her in London in the next episode. This is true. I promise you. Listen, there's a flower set on the road. Shall I fetch you some? they be eaten. Uh, no, madam. Since coming to Genoa, his lordship cannot bear to part with them, and now he wishes to test their longevity. Oh, uh, his lordship wishes me to thank you and ask if you'd be good enough to copy out Canto 16 for him. But this is a playbill. Uh, other side, madam. Uh, his lordship apologises for not appearing personally, but he's indisposed. Was it serious? No, madam, but, uh, would you happen to know how to remove caustic from the skin? You should try the juice of a lemon. I have, and it's useless. I wish I could find some of Socrates' hemlock, but they say don't poison people nowadays. No, you'll have to go yourself tonight and make my apologies. Six o'clock at their hotel. Must I? What? Are you afraid of her ladyship? Or the Count Dorsey? But it is you they want to see. Well, how can I go like this? I'd frighten them to death. No, you can't. Well, of course I can't. I look like a Dalmatian. That doctor is a blundering fool. We certainly won't be taking him with us. Do you mean we are sailing? It is certain? Yes, but don't tell your sister yet. The committee has to make me a formal invitation, then I must write Trelawney, and there'll be all the preparations. Eviva! Quiet! And don't imagine it will be any picnic. Action at the last! The Liberty Boy with your dreams of glory. Teresa, please go away. Byron, what have you done? Please, go back to the other side. It is your ward? Yes, it's my ward. But let me see. No. Please, turn around. Oh, my poor darling, it looks so painful. It is. The skin's come off and I, I can't eat or shave properly. But you've put on too much caustic. It's all over your fingers. I know. But you should try If some... you say juice of lemon. Oh, the cologne. Really? But I think you will not be going to Lady Blessington's today. Oh, not another fit of Italian jealousy. I'll see you this evening. Fletcher! Oh, Nicola! What are you hiding from? Those men who were here the other day. They brought many maps and papers with them. And now you talk of action. Is he going to Greece? Pietro. But how can you go with him? He will not leave me. But if the papal order comes, then you must return with father to Romagna. Oh, that is the condition. The Pope has said so. Do you want them to repeal the order? Now when father can go home? It would destroy him, you know that. <laughs> Carla. <laughs> Teresa, Carla. Uno, due, tre. Capito? Uno, due, tre. Uno, eh. Attenzione, cari. Uno, due, tre. Uno, eh. Aiuto, eh. Abbassa. No. Cut and flesh. Oh. Signor Teloni. By God, I'll have 
have to give you two a lesson. Never do those in your Capitano. What's this, a huzzah? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Where is he, Fletcher? Visiting the Contessa, sir. Uh, Chief Adelio. God, what a mansion. Trust Byron to find something like this. We have the North Wing. If you follow me, sir, I'll show you to your room. And uh, you'll want a bath, eh? I don't doubt it. <laughs> We'll go to Zante first, then proceed to the mainland when we know what the position is. Mm. I'm going to carry up about £10,000 along with powder and medical stores. Oh, your uniform's ready. Uniforms? Design them myself. And the helmets. Pierino, why don't you bring them out? Yes. Ah, uh, you wait, Signor Toloni. You wait! Where the devil were you? Looking at boats. And womanising. Right. Well, you won't need to look any further for a brig. We've engaged the Hercules. I oh, know, I've seen it. I came by the harbour. What's wrong with it? For one thing, she's built like a baby's cradle. She'll be useless in a headwind. I could have got you a fast little clipper at Leghorn. <laughs> well, at least I have one requisite for the general. There's no fear of my running. Did you see his boat in port? Yes. Poor Shiner. He'd more poetry in him than any man living. Or did you ever tell him so? You did not. You knew it was true. There's, uh, there's been talk. When we salvaged the aerial, we found holes in her in the hull. On the rocks? What <laughs> rocks? Holes that a felucca might have made with its prow. But why? Shelley never harmed anyone. He, he was the gentlest man I've ever known. Maybe they thought he had money with him. But you were on board. You and he had nothing in common. I admired and respected him. But you never loved him. Trey, I'm exhausted. Worn out in my emotions. I don't know if I'm capable of love anymore. Because you don't understand it. You're afraid of it. Afraid? Yes. I'm glad. Oh, there are some words I cannot read. I've marked the pages. I'll fill them in. Now, what's all this crinkum crankum about the money? We actually questioned the visa. Well, this is the most the We'll have it let out. Fletcher, where are the helmets? What was it? Magnifico, Atlanta. Very warlike, my lord. Bravo. I can't wear this ring. Why not? I think we've come to a ball. Look at him. Bravo. Oh, bravo. Bravo. Come and join us, Karina. Come and persuade Trelawney. Teresa. Teresa. Absurd womankind. All right, put them away. I suppose I must go and calm her. Forgive me. Mary, when we leave, perhaps she would be kind enough to come up here and spend the day with her. Yes, I will. I'll see you home, Mary. What's this about money? Oh, to send me to England. Won't he give it to you? Oh, yes, he'll give it. It's so coldly. Another obligation. Uh, if his lordship forgets his own rank sometimes, he'll never forgive anyone else doing so. Oh, no. It's my fault. 
cold moonshine now. Now I cannot live without loving and being loved. I was always dependent. You're a fine woman, Mary. Don't take much of an eye to see that. He can carry me there. But I'll play no second part to him in Greece. I know him. He'll prevaricate as usual. Take me home, Charles. If, uh, if you could bring me some, some water in a bowl. Four years. And I haven't even a portrait that's really like you. Pietro has recommended a miniaturist. You sit for him. It always made me feel sorry for myself. They put an iron on it when I was a boy. It only went up a short way, but it looked so ugly. I threw it into a pond. Oh, did you uh, find the flowers in your room? He goes far up into the hills for them, you know. You have to climb high for those, oh, those small wildflowers. There, that's better. It feels more like my own leg now does what it's told. I remember when I was on the Drury Lane committee attending rehearsals, I heard one leg of an elephant saying to another, damn your eyes, move a little faster. There, no more lemon, Karina. It won't be many months, Karina. But you understand I cannot expose you to the long voyage and an unsettled country. Go back to Ravenna with your father, and as soon as I've done, I'll join you there. Oh, there's a, there's a bundle of manuscripts on my desk. I'll keep them for you. <laughs> they may be valuable one day. And as an ordinary precaution, I've drawn up a will. I had already left you 5,000 pounds. Which I do not accept. I'm adding a codicil for the same amount. Here. Put on your own stockings. Do not insult me. Teresa, I want you to be independent. Independent? Comfortable. I have never accepted anything from you, and I never will. Dio mio, you want to pay me off like an old mistress? No, no, no. What I give you is free because I love you, because you give me great happiness. Now stop that. This stupid. The money would have gone to Allegra. Take it for her sake. There is your sister's family. Have you thought of them? And your wife and daughter? My wife? Who is she? Someone who couldn't live with me at 12 months. Or you? Who've sacrificed everything. Who've persuaded me there can be no real happiness. Evening. Look. Look at the fireflies. 
You will come back. You will. Fletcher, bring another plate for Count Gamba. No, thank you. Oh, this cheese is delicious. After last night? Yes, you do still look a little pale. I was never so glad to put back into port. <laughs> Hello, there's our friend. Give him this, Fletcher. Don't bring any flowers. A guinea, my lord? Yes. And see, Lion has something to eat. Yes, my lord. Do you think we'll sail again tomorrow? If Trey's had those stalls repaired, the horses kicked up almost as much fuss as you did. I think it is very important that you arrive soon in Greece, my lord. Well, we must do what we can for the ancients. I saw the caretaker. Did they leave this morning? A few hours ago. Teresa was quite calm until they left. He says she was watching the sky and the wind. She was helped into the carriage. Well, there's nothing to keep us here, and Trelawney will need you, I suspect. Yes. Ride down, and I'll join you. Oh, we'll leave soon enough. We spend too much time eating, Fletcher. My lord? When one subtracts from life, infancy, sleep, eating and swilling, buttoning and unbuttoning, how much is left of downright existence? The summer of a dormouse. You're not yourself today, sir. I am, Fletcher. That's the trouble. Once we've really sailed, sir, you know how you are before we start anywhere? I tell you this, Fletcher. I'd, I'd give a great deal not to be going. Then don't, my lord. No. I've pledged myself now. And besides, there's something I have to discover. You, uh, you did pack the helmets. Oh, yes, sir. Well, I shall wear mine, whatever Soroni says. Those helmets were expensive. Yes, my lord. You don't think them too fanciful? Not for the Greeks, my lord. All right, Fletcher, bring the horses round to the gate and I'll join you there. 